Hi, I'm Greg. I'm at Angler's Hall, and we're going to tie a fly called the Hippie Stomper. This fly is from a good friend, uh, Andrew Gorillos, who is a guide up at the uh, up in Alaska for quite a while. Then he moved down to the Gunnison and guided many years in the Black Canyon of the Gunnison, and currently is a big steelhead fisherman up in. Uh, BC, uh, living out of Seattle. Stippy Hippie Stomper is a fly that he's kind of refined. He started it off kind of small with upright wings, kind of like a humpy style, real flashy. Then he started tying it in big, light wire salmon flies, skating them, uh, fishing them in Chile while he was down there guiding. And then uh, once he got back to Colorado, he kind of refined it for some of the smaller rivers we have here. Tonight I'm going to tie a red one, but you can use your imagination. Use uh, or tie them in all different colors. Lime is really good. Yellow, uh, purple, yellows, um, just whatever you want to do. If you want to throw some blue flash in here, you can do that as well. But the red one we sell here at the store, and it's probably one of my favorite dry flies. Great in the summer for dropping another dry fly behind it or even doing a dropper or two. So first part of this fly, I'm going to tie this on a uh, Tamco 100 SPBL size 12. You could also use a little longer shank hook if you'd like. Uh, some 6 aught Danville black thread. Then we're going to mount up some black dyed elk for the tail. And then after that, we're going to put in some foam. And the foam we're using is this razor foam in black and then also red. And I've cut a couple pieces out. And there's two different sizes here. The, the black is going to be the one millimeter. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. It's the actual, the smaller, the 0 0.0 millimeter in the black and the one millimeter in the red. So there's, you'll notice when this is tied up that there are two different thicknesses of foam. Then, the body itself is just going to be some red flash boot. Legs are going to be some centipede legs from Montana Fly in a black white or black tan. And these are size small. We're going to run in some hackle, some grizzly hackle. And then also a post or a wing of some white uh, McFly lawn, you can use poly yarn, uh, but what I like using for this is Widow's Web just for its floatability. So I'll get started on this. <laughs> so we'll lay down a foundation of thread. I'm going to start the thread right behind the eye of the hook. By doing that, that's going to help other parts of um, the fly from sliding around. It's just going to be a little bit more durable. I've grabbed some of the uh, this early season elk dyed black. You could probably use also some uh, moose mane. That would work fine too. cleaned and stacked this. Tail's going to be uh, just a little bit past the hook gap. Lay that in at a 45 degree angle. Make a soft wrap. Tightening my wraps as I come forward. I can kind of let go. 
look at that and adjust it if I need to make it a little longer or shorter. And at this point, I'm going to pull all of this forward. forward and I'll clean this up here in a second basically what I want to do is just make sure that my body is the entire same you know, diameter down the entire length okay so what I was careful to do here is I want to make sure that the body is the same diameter throughout this entire fly so we don't have any bumps or little drop-offs. And now I can compress this body down back to the tail so it doesn't flare around the fly. go. Now to kind of keep this bulk down on this fly, when I put the foam together, I'm going to cut just a little slight wedge into this fly. Or I should say the foam. So just a slight taper to that. I want to tie this foam in with, with the black side down. Again, I'm going to run through here with my thread, taper that all down. And the next piece is some of this red flashaboo. I've grabbed about four pieces, Just lay it on top, do a little pinch wrap, make a couple wraps backwards, and I can pull these out of the eye. back thread back forward and without letting go of my mirror my flash of boo I'm just going to wind that forward you can see why I've started with a bunch of this so that it does want to kind of go its own way. Stop right up at the head. Get that off. Now we can pull this foam over the top, the red on the bottom, and then I'm going to tie this down. I'm going to come backwards. Give myself a little level spot there. At this point, I can cut this away, get it out. Next thing we're going to do is mount some rubber legs. If 
So bring my thread right to the center here. Wrap both of those right around my thread. Bring it to the top. They're both on there. And then I can grab this side. Lay it down into that little crease. And then on my far side I can do that as well. And then I'm going to just bring your thread back and tie in those legs all the way to the back of that first section. I'm going to come forward, tie those legs in at the front of that section. And then those are mounted up. Now we'll grab our yarn, <clears throat> and this is going to be placed right on top. Start at the back of that front segmentation. Come to the back. Let's make sure it's all tied in well. And at this point, I'm going to grab some hackle. Strip off some barbs off the stem. Measure that so that I make my first wrap kind of wrapping bare stem. And the heavier you hackle this, the easier this is going to be to float. Get one more wrap in there. Tie this off. It's like a bunch of stuff going on here at once, but we're almost done with this fly. At this point, I'm just going to bring my thread right up to the head. We'll finish this. We can do some uh, manicuring here. So the front piece here of the foam or the yarn. You want that to be just past the head. So you can just pull that straight forward, cut that off. And then on the back section, this is a little bit shorter. Basically that just helps with floatability. Um, kink it up, frog fanny it, dry shake it, whatever you need to do. Kind of dry this fly once fish is eating it. Pull the legs back, and I usually pull them back without a lot of tension so that I don't make them too short. I just cut them about the length of the tail there, and then on the front I'll come up, cut it just past the front, and then one last thing is you're going to come in here on the bottom and cut the hackle off the bottom of the fly. And from having discussion with Andrew, he really likes this to be cut close. Um, some of the store-bought ones, they just put a little V-cut in there and uh, 
what he likes to do is to keep this thing nice and flat on the bottom. That will keep that fly from rolling over on you. Lots of times you'll have big dry flies and uh, they'll have a tendency to roll. So this guy lays flat on the water. Great little pattern. I fish it all the time through the summer on small creeks, big rivers. Sometimes I use it uh, as my lead fly. Other times I'll use it as my trailing. And then again, lots of times I'll use it to support uh, little beadhead flies. But nice and bright, shiny. It's a fish catcher.